If you own a computer radio system like the Hitech Aurora 9, you're going to want to make sure it's up to date so you can take advantage of all the latest features. In order to do so, you're going to have to uh, purchase the HPP22 PC Programmer. This allows you to update the software inside the radio as well as keep the Spectre 2.4 gig module up to date. This is also going to apply to the uh, Hitech Optic 6 Sport 2.4 as well as the Eclipse 7. The HPP22 module itself is a small box, has three outputs for connection to the radio system as well as a mini USB. Now the kit does include uh, an eighth inch stereo to a radio connection. It also includes a couple of uh, what look like extensions, but actually they're actually female to female connections. So you can go from the data module into uh, the actual HPP22. Now to get started, you have to download and install the software. You go onto the HiTech website at hitechrcd.com. Now we're already at the so software download section, but from the homepage, you go to support, software downloads, click on software, and you'll see the HPP22 available. Download that, install it, and it'll give you an icon on your desktop, HPP22. We'll go ahead and launch that, and this is what the actual application looks like. And in order to start using the actual application, you have to plug in the HPP22. When you do that the first time, it's going to go through and check to make sure that the firmware on the HPP22 is updated. If it is a new version available, it's going to prompt you. You can go ahead and, and execute the update at that time. Ours is up to date, and the blue LED inside the module will light, showing us that it's ready to go. Now we'll go ahead and uh, update, let's see, we'll start off with the, um, we'll go to the etc, and we'll go ahead and update the Spectra module inside the, the Aurora 9. Now, with the Aurora 9, there's a bit of an exception. Uh, you're going to want, you have a module that's built in separately. You're going to want to update the 2.4 gig module first and then update the radio system. The reason you do that is as you add new features in to the radio system itself, it's going to be looking for uh, that data signal from the Spectra module that enables those features. So if you just update the radio system and not the module, you're going to see some things that, that, aren't, that aren't quite operating properly. So you want to update both of them at any given time, the module first and then the radio system. Um, on the uh, Optic 6 and also on the Eclipse 7, you just have the trainer port that you're going to program through. You don't have to worry about going into the module itself. Everything's handled through the trainer port. So we'll start off by following the instructions. Um, when, when we see the, uh, the uh, uh, upgrade function for, for upgrading the module itself, it tells us to plug in the 3-pin connector, the P1 port of HPP22, which is this first port right here. And we're going to go ahead and do that with one of the data cables. And then next, we need to uh, plug in the 3-pin connector to the data port. And that's back here in the back of the Spectra module. When you get it from the factory, it may have a cover over top of it. Just peel that cover back, and uh, you'll be able to plug in your cable then. Now that it's plugged in, all it tells us to do is go ahead and turn on the Aurora 9 and touch Yes for the Aurora 9. Now what that is is the uh, it, uh, OK to transmit. So we'll turn it on, ready to transmit, we'll say yes. And now it sees the Spectra module and it gives us the option to upgrade. It will show the current version that you got installed and we're going to go ahead and look at the upgrade. You do have a low battery warning function as well, so you can set different low battery warning functions on the Spectra module itself if you're using a different cell count, for example, if you're using a two cell LiPo as opposed to the included nickel metal hydride. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at the upgrade function. And now that we're in, it's going to go ahead and tell us again what we have currently installed. Even though we have the latest, we'll go ahead and execute another install of the latest as well. So we'll just be overwriting the firmware. It'll connect to the internet, download the latest version, or the, the version you've chosen, and it'll go ahead and start the, uh, the upgrade. Once it completes, we'll get a, a notification telling us that the upgrade is complete. And there it is. Now keep in mind, before you do any sort of firmware updates, you're going to make sure you've done a full charge on the uh, transmitter. You don't want it to power off mid-process. So go ahead and go back. And now let's go ahead and move to the actual Aurora 9 radio system itself. We'll turn the system off, unplug the data connection. And we'll choose transmitter and the Aurora 9. Now it's going to give us a different set of instructions. In fact, we're going to use the other cable, the eighth inch stereo cable. We'll go ahead and unplug the previous cable we used, plug this one in. And now we're going to be going into the trainer port on the back of the radio. 
It says plug in a three pin connector to the P1 port of the HP-P22, plug in a stereo jack to the trainer port, and then turn on a transmitter. So we'll go ahead and with the transmitter off, we'll plug it into the trainer port, and we'll turn on the transmitter. Okay, now the, by default, the mode we went into is actually the uh, uh, data save and data load. We can grab profiles or all of our model memory and load it on our PC locally. Let's do a save to PC. It's going to read everything that's on the Aurora 9. And give us the option to save it somewhere on our computer. Same thing, we can do data load and just choose a file and upload it to the radio system. Now if we go back, what we'll notice when we go ahead and do this installation of this process again, I'll we'll turn it off, unplug it, is that when we choose transmitter, and this confuses some people, but it's, a, it's an important step, choose the Aurora 9, and we're going to go from the HPP22 mode, which is currently inactive, to the upgrade mode. So if you've gotten confused and you can't figure out where the actual firmware update section is, this is where you do it. Go ahead and choose upgrade mode, and it's going to tell us to plug the 3-pin connector into the back as well and turn on the transmitter. And now you see a different screen pops up. Now we can choose which language we want for the firmware. We'll choose English. And we'll go ahead and select the version. We'll just grab the latest version, 1.09. Your current version loaded will reflect up here once you plug it in and activate this process. We're going to go ahead and overwrite that with the latest version to show you. It. It'll go out to the internet, grab the latest file, and start the upgrade process. This will take a few minutes. There's a lot of data blocks to write. You see over 16,000 data blocks to write. So just keep everything connected. Make sure you get that fresh charge in the battery, and be patient. And after a few minutes, it'll go ahead and upload the uh, firmware. Now that it's completed, we get a uh, completion confirmation. And that's it. It returns us back to uh, the uh, HPP22 mode, which was the first screen that we saw. Again, uh, echoing back the actual firmware version, version 1.09 is what's currently loaded on the Aurora 9, and we can always confirm that through the actual transmitter itself. We'll disconnect, and then we can go through our settings, and we can go to the info button, and it'll show which version we're running, 1.090. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, same process is going to take place generally uh, for the um, Optic 6 as well. We'll go ahead and do that now. We'll go ahead and choose the transmitter, Optic 6 Sport 2.4. It's going to tell us what we need to do. Now again, here's our HPP22 mode, which is a data mode, or here's our actual upgrade mode. So if you're doing the firmware upgrade, you want to switch over to upgrade mode. We'll go ahead and follow directions. It says to go ahead and press all four of the buttons on the front of it, on the front of the panel like this. So we'll press all those and plug in the trainer cable. You see both icons flashing on the back of the link button showing that it's talking through the, the uh, data uplink port. So we can choose the Optic 6 port 2.4 and which version we want to load. So we'll, say we'll go ahead and load 1.030. Do you want to continue? Yes, we do. It'll download the latest version from the internet and it'll go ahead and upload it to the Optic 6 port. And once it's complete, we'll get a confirmation, and we're set. Now we'll go back to that HPP22 mode again, uh, which is a way to access the model information. And that's how you do a transmitter. So we've covered both the Aurora 9 and the uh, Hitec Optic 6 Sport. Now after you do an upgrade, it's always nice to go through and just verify, turn it on, make sure everything's functioning just fine before you proceed. If you ever have any problems at all, like uh, I've had, I've actually bricked this unit before uh, as we went through testing. We tried to double, uh, tried to double load the same version onto the uh, the uh, firmware, and it caused a problem. And the screen was blank; it would not power on. I can get, couldn't get anything out of it. All you do is turn the unit off, and go through the uh, upgrade mode again, and restore the very first version of firmware, and then you can apply the latest version of firmware, and it should bring the radio right back to life for you. So don't panic if the thing goes blank in the process. In fact, we had it happen once when the battery went dead when we were doing the update, just to see how it handled it. So it's easily recovered. And we'll go ahead and uh, update a receiver. What I'm going to do is, is uh, I found the best success. If I go ahead, I've got an Optima 9 here receiver and just a battery to test with. So we'll use that as a power source. And you do need to have it powered uh, through the upgrade, upgrade process. We'll disconnect our eighth inch cable and we'll move over to a standard data cable back in the P1 
one of the uh, HPP22. We'll plug in the data port on the Optima 9. And then we've just got power here. We'll go ahead and power on the, uh, the unit. It'll just flash briefly, but we've got it powered on and connected to the HPP22. We'll relaunch the software. We're going to go receiver, select the target, oops, and then we're going to choose the Optima 7.9. And it found it, and it brings up the screen then. So we've got fail safe. Again, you can go through, which is kind of interesting. When you connect to the HPP22 software and to the interface, you can actually directly address the fail safes. So you can set a specific channel's fail safe, say for example, throttle, channel 3. We can go through and say, all right, uh, when I go into fail safe mode, I want this thing to zero out the throttle or you know, I can even choose 900 at that point or drag it down to a specific value. You notice the actual servo wheel actually changes too, which is kind of cool. Um, we'll go ahead and do back on that. So we've set 900 as channel three, so you can actually manually set up uh, your, um, your fail safes here. I'll go ahead and leave everything defaulted now. We'll go back and then you, of course you can on off save, you can save that, um, that setting. We'll hit back. Yes, we're gonna go ahead and do an upgrade. So it sees our Optima 7 or 9, it's a version 2.02 software, which is the current version, but we're going to go ahead and overwrite that with the latest version 202, and we'll say yes. And you'll notice this goes a little bit quicker, downloads the file from the internet, and then applies the update, it starts uploading the update from the uh, PC to the, to the actual receiver, and you'll notice your LEDs flashing on your HPP22, and also both LEDs flashing on your receiver, which indicates that it's receiving the update, or writing to the, to the uh, flash memory. And we'll get a confirmation prop when it's all finished. There we go. And it's that simple. We're going to go back, and we're back at our main page. Now, something else to keep in mind, too, about the HP22 software uh, is that it's, it also enables you to do some other things or, or, or allows some other functions to be performed. Um, we can actually unplug the HP22 for everything else we're doing right now. Uh, there are additional firmware updates. For example, the uh, HTS Voice is going to get its firmware updated in the same fashion through the uh, HP20, HPP22 software. And, uh, but we also have the head end or the interface for the telemetry systems uh, built into the software as well. So we'll take a look at that. Um, you can do your chargers, and you know, et cetera, was the uh, 2.4 uh, spectrum module, receiver and transmitter. Down here, you're going to see the high-tech telemetry system command center. If you click on that, with nothing plugged in, it does give you the option to go into demo mode. So we have our Navi, which is uh, the PC uh, interface which allows us to take telemetry information coming from our, our telemetry capable transmitters that are hooked up to, to uh, telemetry components to actually bring that into the PC real time. We're going to take a look at that real quick. So we'll go into the nitro display mode, choose that icon and then there it is. See that's, so we've got the, the actual dashboard, a virtual dashboard on the PC that'll take all of that telemetry information real time and bring it in. We can, we can record it, we can play it back for later viewing. And it's going to grab everything from RPM sensing to uh, GPS course, GPS altitude and distance from, uh, from uh, um, uh, uh, location of origin. And also we have the uh, RX battery, the receiver battery, uh, the fuel, if you have the fuel level sensor in, four temperature sensors, and then also your uh, general trip information. So depending on which one you choose, it's going to reflect those changes as well. Um, we'll go back to uh, the head end here, and we'll go ahead and choose the uh, blue, which is for electrics telemetry station. This is how we get in and see all of its information. You notice a little different. We've got a, we have a section over here now that's batteries. So we have our volt, current, and, and real-time wattage calculations. And then our couple RPMs, GPS course. We lost the fuel sensor since it's not on the blue uh, for electric sensor. Our four temperature and again our, our uh, GPS information. So very handy. Another neat feature of the HPP22 software is we can also go in and view um, uh, a couple things. 3D Google Map, which allows us to, or Google Earth, which allows us to actually see our GPS coordinates and our activity in real time on a rendered uh, display. And, and also when we play back, we can track it as well. Or we can go to the 3D display, or 2D display, which gives us a nice uh, a, a kind of a vector layout of where we've been uh, on GPS coordinates, where we're going, or everything that takes place during the flight that we can then go back and, and uh, track later. So it's kind of a neat function of the software. Um, if we go back out and exit out of this and exit back to our main screen, again, you'll also see the HTS Navi, which becomes an option when you plug it in. You can do the uh, uh, linking and everything else from there uh, to, your trans to your transmitter. And then also the uh, HTS Voice, 
which is the voice telemetry interface module. Uh, you would do the firmware updates there and also at that point choose uh, how to go through and set the different display options. We're not going to go into that in this, in this clinic. This is just focusing on the, the firmware updating and the basic functions of the HPP22. You can watch the uh, three-part series that's on telemetry systems to get a better understanding of what all you can do within the HPP22 software. If you'd like more information about any of the products we discussed today, you can go to the High Tech website at hightechrcd.com. Under products, you'll see it organized under aircraft and surface and all the different products. And of course, if you have any questions or you need some support on the specific products that you own, you can always contact High Tech um, at their uh, email line, service at hightechrcd.com. Uh, absolute industry renowned service uh, and support from High Tech. You'll, it's second to none, so any problems you have, they'll make sure it's taken care of very quickly.